welcome to this video i'm making this video as a second attempt to understand uh, the un uh, understanding schemes uh, rounds races chains what all these mean i have already done one video on this but i found that there were certain errors in my understanding in that video so i hope to correct those errors and also explain these concepts a little further my understanding has developed from the book called the inner life by c w ledbetter so uh, let's look at firstly what we know about the universe as it exists today we are part of the milky way we are simply a small dot rotating around that great center and uh, though initially what must have been in the space that we occupy in the solar system just empty space before anything was created in the space now in this empty space uh, theosophy says that there were already some fundamental particles nanoparticles of or uh, the atom or some other kind of particles which are called qulon in theosophy and it was this uh, matter that was taken up by the deity who's our solar lo solar logos who's represented by the sun who has decided to establish his life here using these fundamental particles and using them he created the seven planes of being through his own body now in this planetary uh, scheme what what is happening in the solar system scheme what's happening is uh, 10 planetary schemes are being uh, created and uh, here you see the sun as the heart of the solar logos and the entire solar system is the body of the solar logos but actually the solar system is double the uh, depth of what we actually know uh, in terms of its planet uh, width it is double because there is a kuiper belt of matter which is around which is also floating around this uh, solar system so the actual body of the solar logos is really huge and you can see now comparatively the small sun which is like our heart in our body is the heart of the solar deity or solar logos we call it of course the sun is much much bigger than us we are just like a spot here this tiny dot that is earth compared to the sun because of its distance it looks smaller so now going back to the concept that the solar logos created 10 planetary schemes which are which are growing in this solar system now if you look at it carefully these 10 planetary schemes are written in this and uh, this is like a large uh, uh, flower in which uh, there is the vulcan the venus the earth the jupiter saturn uranus neptune schemes and then there are three other schemes which are unnamed and unvisible whereas all these others have got visible planets the vulcan planet is also the uh, present between mercury and uh, venus right now in a, a level that we cannot see and we will know we will understand why it is so later so here again i have written the same thing down and uh, now if you look at it, the earth scheme if you look at it there are these seven star like uh, images here and these represent seven chains so now we understand one thing that 10 planetary schemes make our solar system and seven ch chain periods make one planetary scheme so if you look at it each of these planetary schemes have got seven chains in them and each of them continue to make one planetary scheme we are part of the earth uh, planetary scheme so this is the earth uh, planetary scheme in which we are presently on earth in this earth chain whereas this chain ha will have and has had three other incarnations or three chains before it and it will have three more chains after it so they, these seven in these seven uh, chains it evolve it intends to evolve man to its highest possible potential so uh, if you look at it more carefully you will see that in the first chain or the first incarnation the first two uh, circles which are called globes in theosophy are in what is the spiritual plane if you see on the right the word spiritual is written here then the next two are in the intuitional plane then the last three are in the mental plane and the mental plane is divided into two parts the higher mental which is these two and the last the lower most of this chain is in the lower mental now we on earth if you look at it we are in the lower mental in the first two uh, first and last globe and the second and uh, uh, the sixth globe we are in the emotional uh, we have the emotional globes mars earth and mercury are the visible part of our chain so uh, now we look at it that we are in the fourth chain that means we have already come down from the first second and third and uh, now we are in the fourth as human beings and uh, 
the first the the earlier chain was called the lunar chain now what happens is that there is something called the move the life wave which starts at uh, this alphabet a and goes down to b c d e f and g in this order and it goes round seven times before it goes to the next chain now in each this period this period of its movement of seven rounds around it is one chain uh, period this is called one chain period so we saw 10 planetary schemes make our solar system chain uh, seven chain periods make one planetary scheme and seven rounds make one chain period so now we look at what is the meaning of one round one round is when we have actually done uh, this one and this entire thing once so a movement from a to g once now just like we are at various levels of our evolution in the earth planetary scheme the other planetary schemes are also in their various evolutions so a uh, vulcan scheme is in its third incarnation that is it's in its third chain it's in its third chain and uh, the venus scheme is in its seventh round in its fifth chain and it has the most advanced humanity of the solar system so at this seventh round the, the beings there are are not in physical form but in ethereal form now earth scheme is in its fourth incarnation that is the fourth chain and in its fourth round so it has already finished three and a half rounds it's halfway through its fourth round and it has two more rounds to go after that all the uh, matter that our humans or all that living that is here on our, our planet will completely transfer itself to uh, mercury on its next plane or uh, in its next level so then jupiter schema is in its third chain and in the second round saturn schema the third chain in its first round neptune scheme is in its fourth chain uranus very little is known about that and the three other unnamed schemes are uh, very little is known about them they are all in much higher planes so you look at what's happening here if you see that all of these 10 uh, schemes are developing simultaneously and they are at various levels so now we will look at what is happening in our earth scheme in greater detail why is all this happening in the first place to understand this we have to know that our human body is extremely complex just a physical body how complex it is we eat food it gets digested it's it's it, it is excreted everything happens without our any involvement in that including every aspect of our mind our brain our heart our limbs our everything is happening quite automatically now what theosophy says is man doesn't just have a physical body he has an etheric double which is an exact replica of himself and then he has an emotional body which is this uh, colorful body that you see and after that it has a mental body and after that it has its higher planes of buddhic and atmic body so all these bodies have to be also formed before the man itself can can develop so for all these bodies these various bodies are made up of matter which is unconscious but it is still intelligent and that uh, that uh, kind of intelligence is called or uh, unconscious intelligence is called elemental in theosophy so as per theosophy there are not, not just four kingdoms of nature as we normally know as mineral plant animal and man there are three more elemental 1 2 and 3 and uh, to understand what these elementals are these elementals make our other bodies so for example the elemental 3 makes the astral ma matter of our emotional body so what happens is that each of these elementals grow in one chain so in elemental 1 it goes around seven times until it's fully developed and goes to the next chain as elemental 2 then elemental 2 goes around seven times and then goes to the next chain which we are calling the lunar chain because its visible planet is the moon now here the word planet need not be confused with what we term as planet it's just uh, a globe that is visible to us is moon so this chain is called the lunar chain and now elemental 1 has become 2 and then has become 3 and now it's ready to come as a conscious matter in mineral form uh, theosophy says that all mineral form or that is from the stage it becomes an atom before this it was all subatomic until it becomes an atom the atom itself is conscious and it's the first mineral form and after this the complex mineral forms develop in in seven rounds uh, in the in this chain then go to the next chain as plant again developing in complex forms of plant li life and then go to 
the animal form and for, in the animal form it develops even more complex and finally it goes as goes and becomes man in the last chain here again going around seven times until it has fully developed man and and it man evolves out of this at at its at its highest potential as an adept who is a fully evolved man so just a small interesting aspect in the mineral uh, kingdom what happens is that one type of mineral which is of course uh, called crystals does not become plant but in, instead becomes directly an animal and that is why crystals are used for healing because they have such power in them so that's just, just a small in, uh, detail so now we look at the earth chain we are in the fourth chain and we are in the fourth round of this chain now uh, what we have to do is we have to go around this another two and a half times so in after we finish our fourth round and start the fifth round and we are midway that is again on earth in the fifth round three fifth of humanity will have progressed to such an extent that they can become adepts in the future but two fifth will not so those two fifth will be transferred directly to the fifth chain and will not progress then in the fourth chain the reason being that the three fifth who are progressing will be disturbed by the two fifth because of the the disturbance that may be caused to their uh, meditations to their practices to their to their higher levels of thinking the two fifth who are not yet that progress will be transferred to the next chain whereas the three fifth will continue on this earth chain and evolve to become adepts so uh, what we expect is that by the end of the seventh round three fifth of humanity will have reached the adepthood and uh, the advanced part of the uh, that that part also the advanced adept uh, family of three fifth of humanity will also go to uh, venus but it will go at the ethereal level with their etheric bodies they will not be in their physical bodies anymore this is explained further in the ma book man with the rents and how by this chart uh, written by annie besant and uh, cw ledbetter in which they explain how this life wave you see this little arrows these are life waves and on the left are the various kingdoms of nature on the top on the x axis are the chains so the first second third fourth fifth sixth and seventh chain now if you look at it all of these chains have got a uh, matter of all the kingdoms growing in them so if you look at this an elemental one in the first chain becomes elemental two in the second chain three in the third chain then mineral vegetable animal man and it comes out as an adept this flower like image is of an adept and uh, what we need to understand here is if there will be some confusion and this is a matter which had confused me and the error that i had made in my earlier video which is that we are human here so we must have been animal in the lunar chain mineral uh, plant in the uh, the second chain and mineral in the first as per this uh, theory then when the, how did we come to this first chain because we already come as mineral that has happened in some other scheme in some other planetary scheme where we had evolved in elemental 1 2 and 3 and after that came to this chain so what's happening is supposing you take this to be any other chain we may have started as elemental 1 in the fifth chain two in the sixth and a uh, three in the seventh chain but after that there is no further evolution in this scheme because this scheme is finished so we had to come to another scheme and start our evolution as mineral and that's how we are man in this particular earth scheme and we are we have to evolve out of this man uh, stage of kingdom to the next stage in this uh, in our uh, life on our, this earth chain so uh, this is what uh, this is, this uh, chart is explaining that how now what happens is now all parts of the element every kingdom will not evolve to the next kingdom some elementals may not be good enough to evolve to the elemental 2 so they will continue as elemental 1 uh, in the same scheme and evolve to elemental 2 in that same particular chain in the same chain it will evolve further as elemental 2 and then go to the next chain as elemental 3 so they, all of them may not evolve then that happens with humanity also with vegetable kingdom with all the kingdoms it happens that everybody all of it is not evolving at the same uh, stage and here you will see the human who becomes uh, comes out of this whole thing as evolved entities and which is our stage right now we are on the fourth uh, chain and we are it is our stage but as a human we have to evolve out of this stage this is another image of showing which shows uh, how these these circles represent chains 
So if you look at it from uh, this, uh, at this arrow, which is the life uh, wave, which is coming into this globe. Now it has come at elemental one, but then what happens is if you follow the blue line, a part of it evolves in, into elemental two, which is the yellow, yellow circle, but a part of it remains blue because it has not evolved yet. So it continues in the same uh, kingdom. So this evolution is explained in this whole thing. And this you see, there is the uh, human who has evolved into adepthood in this also, as also the other seven kingdoms of uh, nature, which is evolving in all these seven chains. So this, uh, this system of seven uh, chains is represented. This is one planetary scheme that is represented in this drawing with each of these uh, being uh, chains. So all of these are individual chains and how the energy transfers from one chain to another is ex ex uh, shown here. So how humans will ultimately, so this blue, if you keep following it, in the end, the blue will become a full man. If you follow this blue line, this blue globe, little by little by little, it will progress and ultimately become a full man. So this is how uh, the evolution takes place. So as per the Darwinian uh, theory that we evolved from monkeys is completely uh, incorrect. It is the other way around. What has happened uh, is that we evolved as animals in third round and came directly to this chain as, as man. And uh, though in the first round in our earth chain, we were not exactly man, but we were rather etheric clouds. So in the first round, the entire uh, each globe we were just etheric clouds developing further and further. In the second round, we were like amoeba, like uh, jelly-like forms, and uh, which would extend whenever it needed something. And over time, that extensions became more solidified and uh, more formed. Then in the third round, they were, we were still giant cloud-like matter in the, in the globe of Mars. But on Earth, it de we developed further with uh, protruding jaws and eyes on the sides of our head. We still had no forehead, but a roll of flesh. And the feet were such that the toes and the heels were extended equally. So what they, uh, the, the beings could run both front and back. And they also had a third eye at the back of their heads, which has now become our pineal gland. So that was a kind of creature that existed on Earth in the third round. That is eons before now. And uh, these also slowly progressed intellect slowly developed and uh, like in uh, when this uh, in the third round when the this uh, these kind of creatures with this uh, kind of feet and uh, head move to mercury the next planet as you see in our in our globe you have uh, earth and after that it com becomes mercury uh, it was more civilized and its civilization so the quality was that it was able to share its food it was no longer fighting so uh, now we finish these three rounds. And at uh, that time, still man was not so developed. That man created thoughts. In fact, the mental plane was filled with the thoughts of devas. And uh, that was what was in the mind of the man too. Now in the beginning of the fourth round, man's mind, mind began to develop. And, uh, but it was still not so good because it was very selfish, violent, and vicious. And uh, it was so vicious that the animal kingdom grew apart from man because it, they were frightened of man. So in the fourth round, this uh, this life wave, when it touch, touches Mars, that is that is before us. If you see Mars is before us, it when it touches Mars, it has it it, it was still some scary evil looking creature. But later, calmer men came on Mars and built cities and and the launch of the moon. That is. People who were evolved much before in other chains, in previous evolutionary chains, were they came to give a knowledge of the fire, of how to build fire. And uh, that's how that, that race in the Mars uh, plan, uh, globe evolved. But it was still er erratic in nature and it, was, uh, it wanted control. It was inflexible about learning new things. Finally, in the seventh race in Mars, in the, in the, on the fourth round, it became more intellectual, had developed artistic abilities in Mars. It developed the ability to build roads and cities. And it was this life that came to Earth. Now in Earth itself, it had to continue its development. And this development happens in, the, in root races. What are root races? Root races are a kind of uh, uh, intelligent uh, type of uh, humanity, which is or of being 
which is evolving. So the first uh, one was Polarian, the second was Hyperborean. Still, they were not completely human in form. In the Lemurian uh, root race was when the first forms took place. And after that came the Atlantean. And we are currently in the Aryan root race. Now, each time, this is happening now on Earth. So each time each of these root races were there, the, the constitution of the plan, planet's continent itself was different. So in the case, uh, during the period of the Lemurian time, which was again uh, millions of years ago, uh, it was this was the nature of the continent that you see in red. And uh, in the background, you see our present continents, which is uh, marked at bla in black. So this, this red was what was part of what is Lemuria. And uh, it was in the Lemurian uh, root race that the separation of the sexes took place. Until then, we were uh, we, we were anthropoid. We had both uh, both sexes in us. Uh, but then, in the Lemurian race, the separation of sexes took place, and this itself took a million years to happen. This took place about one and a half crores or one point six crore BC years ago. That third root race. It was during this period that the Lords of the Flame which is the advanced uh, 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 beings from the planet Venus, Venus came to Earth, led by Sanat Kumara and his uh, team of people who came down and developed the man, uh, mind of man. Now, what happened then is that when they developed the mind of man, some of those men who were still not advanced, they intermingled with animals and produced the monkey or the chimpanzee, the anthropoid form. And that is what we see as uh, monkeys today. And that is why the Darwinian theory is wrong. It was man who created monkeys rather than the other way around that monkeys from we have evolved from monkeys. It's not that the case. Man came into the earth uh, uh, chain uh, completely de more developed from animal. So in the fifth and sixth, uh, sixth and seventh sub races of the third root race. Now we're talking about the third root race. We are now in the fifth uh, root race but in the uh, the fifth sixth and seventh sub races the th the third in the third root race they were more human like in nature though their heads were like eggs and they had still had that fleshy foreheads and eyes on top of their heads so this was the nature of uh, humanity in third root race in the sixth, sixth sub race of the third root race unlike their brown and black predecessors they were livid blue in color so that's another interesting detail. Now we look at some of the remnants of the seventh sub race of the third root race who were able to create sculptures of extraordinary height. And here you see this human being standing next to these sculptures which are still present in the Easter Island. These, these actually, the, 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 the humanity at that stage had this horse-like face with flat noses and uh, a fleshy foreheads which, uh, which even now uh, some races in Africa have this kind of a kind of features. So now we come to the next two race, which is the Atlantean race, which you see in red once again here. And most of this uh, continent was uh, archipelago of uh, islands, and these islands were found in the Atlantic Ocean, and that's how it got its name, the Atlantic Atlantean race. Now what happens is that we know uh, what Plato talked about as. Atlantis being an island which uh, disappeared in uh, 9000 uh, BC. This is that, was, though it was fictional, it is partly true that this happened. But much before that, it was Atlantean was not uh, just once one island, but a very large continent by itself. And, uh, and it was also there before all of it separated into the present continental structure that we see. So the Atlantean race was much more advanced. Uh, then the third root race, the Atlantean root race was far advanced. It had cities, it had it, it had uh, signs, it had developed to a very large extent. And uh, this is a artistic image of one of the Atlantean uh, uh, cities, which existed about 3 million years ago, when human beings also were much taller. Uh, the average height uh, of starting from 7 feet to even 30, 40, 50 feet high tall uh, humans existed. Now, all of this, uh, rem the, whatever is uh, the Atlantean uh, continent is now under the ocean. And over, over that, there are several layers of soil because so much has happened after that, that the remnants of the Atlantean race is very little on Earth today. Now, uh, we have heard of these Burmian, Burmian statues, 
which are there which were there in Atla in Afghanistan until they were destroyed by the Taliban and uh, they are uh, a series of five very tall statues which were made and over time they were decorated to be made to look like the Buddha so the people thought that they represented Buddha but actually they are a history of the how humans evolved from such tall entities and how slowly they became smaller and smaller. So the Bamiyan statues are not all of same height. They reduce in height. So that this is a sort of a record of the uh, of humanity. Now, the, I've just uh, made a, a sort of calculation on how many more births we would need to take before we uh, finish our uh, present uh, fourth uh, round. And I have calculated about 15,000 uh, births uh, about uh, this and maybe you can pause the video and read this of course this is just a conjecture so I, with this i would end uh, this talk and i hope that uh, this was interesting to you and it was useful for you to understand what are the what is the earth's uh, planetary scheme what are the different planetary schemes what is the meaning of chains what are called chain periods and what are, what is the meaning of rounds and uh, root races and if it's been helpful, uh, please uh, write a note below. And uh, thank you so much for listening to this.